Okay, so let's see what happens for a generic weight in the network, uh, somewhere in the network. So let's say I'm talking about a weight W I J K, which is basically uh, connecting the uh, neuron uh, J in layer K minus one to neuron I in layer K, I in layer K. So how is this weight WIJK affecting the final loss function? Well, it's affecting it only through uh, either I can call it uh, the output of this neuron or the presynaptic output, uh, 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 presynaptic input to the neuron, right? So uh, remember, A, I, K was summation uh, W, I. Uh, let me make it a different thing. W, I, L, uh, K, uh, H, L, K minus 1 plus B, I, K, right? Uh, and then I'm summing over L equals 1 to the number of neurons in the previous hidden layer. So that was the equation. And so basically WIJ is one of those, uh, uh, one of these guys, right? So uh, del, uh, uh, the loss function by del WIJK <coughs> by the chain rule is del the loss function by del AIK, which is the only way the effect of WIJ propagates all the way up to the top times uh, del AIK times del WIJK. But you can see that the uh, this, uh, let me changing pin, pin colors again, this part is uh, is really quite simple. Uh, this This part is very simple because you can see that that is just equal to H A of K minus one. So <clears throat> that's what we are computing as we flow up the network, these uh, outputs of the hidden nodes, and that's what appears in the chain rule uh, uh, as, as well for, uh, for uh, this quantity that we are interested in. So this is uh, H A K minus one we are computing anyway. So what remains is to say, okay, how do I compute these uh, uh, these derivatives of the loss functions with respect to these presynaptic uh, activations and let's find a recursion for that as well now. But uh, before we do that, let's also knock off the derivative with respect to the uh, bias. So basically, if I am doing uh, del L by del uh, BIK, it's a generic bias at the kth layer. Again, from, uh, from this equation, you see that that is just equal to uh, uh, del L by del AIK times uh, again del AIK by del BIK but uh, changing pen colors you can see from that equation that this is just equal to 1. So again what matters is these quantities of uh, how the loss function varies uh, as a function of these presynaptic uh, activations. Okay, now uh, we want to compute del L by del AIK. So let's see how it flows up uh, towards, uh, um, towards the output of the neural network to see how it affects uh, uh, loss function, right? So uh, here's uh, AIK, uh, AIK coming in into a nonlinearity, psi, uh, producing H I K, the output of the kth hidden layer, and let's connect it generically to a neuron J in the next layer, uh, and that connection would have weight what W J I K plus one, right? And it's it's connected to a bunch of you know potentially to all the other neurons in the next layer. So I'm just going to draw. Uh, uh, neuron 1 here, and that will be uh, W1, 1i, K plus 1, 
and neuron uh, n sub k plus 1 here and this will be w n sub k plus 1 I guess I'm going to put a comma here uh, k plus 1 right so that's that's the uh, how how this is uh, happening and uh, when I now look at, well, let me just look at what happens uh, as I flow through the nonlinearity. So HI is closer to the output than AI. So when I look at del L by del AI K, I can write it as uh, del L by del HI K. That's how it's, that's the only path with which it's reaching the, the output times uh, del HI K times del a i k and this particular thing is uh, easy because i know that h i k is psi of a i k so del h i k by del a i k is just psi prime evaluated at this activation uh, right so that that part is uh, is easy uh, let me just change pen colors and sort of highlight that. So this part is super easy. Each, each of them is just going flowing through and 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 and, and uh, through this nonlinearity. And what you get back is that uh, it's it's flowing back. Uh, uh, whatever was your um, derivative with respect to h i k, which is this, that's multiplied by this uh, psi prime in computing the derivative with respect to AIK. So that's an easy one. Okay, so what about the uh, derivative uh, of uh, uh, the loss function with respect to the output of the uh, ith neuron in the kth layer? So, well, uh, that's affecting uh, my, that's being basically, HI is being dispersed all over uh, to the all the other neurons in the next layer. So, uh, this is going to be, and, and it's creating these activations there. So, basically, I have to look at uh, all the presynaptic activations uh, and how uh, the loss function varies with respect to that, and then how the presynaptic activations uh, depend on h i k and I have to sum over all those neurons that I've shown in the figure above uh, there are n sub k plus one neurons like that right and uh, the activations uh, depend on h i in a very in a, in a linear fashion right so a j of k plus one is equal to summation uh, L equals one through n sub k. It basically depends on all these uh, uh, neurons from before. W j L uh, k plus one uh, times the hidden variables coming out of there, and then there's a bias term uh, for the jth neuron, the k plus one layer. And now I'm interested in the changing pen color again. I'm interested in what hap, you know, how, I'm, I'm interested in h i k, so I'm going to look at this for L equals i, right? So basically, I'm going to look at uh, del a j k plus 1 over del h i k is just going to be w j i uh, k plus 1. It's a, it's a very simple uh, equation there. So what what do I have now? Basically, I have that uh, del L by del H I K uh, from the, the this 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 equation is summation over J W J I K plus one times del L by del A J K plus one. Right. And I'm summing over all the neurons in the k plus one uh, layer. So, what we have now is that the derivative with respect to the output of the ith neuron in the kth layer depends on the derivatives uh, for, of, with respect to the uh, presynaptic activations of the next layer up. So, that's why it, it's called back propagation. These derivatives these derivatives are propagating back towards towards this 
and they are uh, multiplied by these uh, weights. And if you look at this guy uh, as a matrix multiplication, uh, you can see usually matrix multiplication is uh, the you know the ith uh, the ith entry here would be uh, some uh, the ijth entry of some matrix times the jth entry there summing over j right so we can see from this is that if i if i represent this as a as a vector so let me say that this uh, let me call this a vector h bar uh, uh, h bar Oh, by k. So I don't have to uh, come up with too much notation. So basically, let me use the notation that uh, x bar, uh, not x bar, let me, uh, any, uh, I don't know, alpha bar uh, for any uh, uh, any coefficient, any bias, whatever, is del L by del alpha. So that's a shorthand for saying, okay, this is a derivative with respect to L, the variable alpha. Right. So, so now if I if I write write in that notation, uh, uh, h h bar. Remember, bar is on top, not at the bottom. Bar at the bottom means vector. Bar at the top means that I'm taking the partial derivative with respect to that variable. H bar of k. What it's boiling down to is that thing is actually w k plus one. The weights connecting the uh, kth layer to the uh, uh, k plus one is there. Transpose times a bar of k plus one, where a bars are the uh, derivatives uh, are, are is the vector of of these uh, these derivatives, and h bar of course is the vector of that derivative. So uh, that's basically uh, the essence of back propagation. So what what's happening? I'm, I have the I have the switching pen pen colors again. I have the derivatives uh, from the k plus oneth layer propagating down to the uh, derivatives respect to the kth layer outputs. So that's this equation, and then. I have the um, earlier equation, which was uh, just this psi prime business, right? This this guy, uh, I can write it as uh, uh, not, and, and and this guy that's feeding into the other guy, I can basically write it as say as uh, a bar of k is equal to, let me go back there to show you what it's uh, uh, equal to. It's basically uh, psi prime uh, evaluated at, evaluated at a k point by point uh, product with uh, h bar of k. So basically, I have the uh, you know this this is just basically writing out uh, uh, the following equation. I'm just uh, the ith entry of that is del L by del a i k is psi prime evaluated at a i k times del L by del h i k. That's what uh, the you know vector form of this equation is, and in all these uh, frameworks like TensorFlow and PyTorch, uh, all they are doing is setting up these computational graphs in which you have these computations flowing up through the network, and then the gradients being propagating, propagated down through the networks. And of course, we we have uh, you know we have uh, things. The things that are flowing are often expressed as vectors or uh, generalizations therefore they're of like tensors and the equations that come come out are are things like either um, this one which is just a scalar uh, you know nonlinearity uh, that I'm going through or um, something more uh, complicated like what we had uh, before which was this uh, uh, you know w uh, w transpose uh, 
W transpose times thing where, where, where I have a um, linear multiplication going through. So, you, you know, you basically define these, uh, uh, essentially these are Jacobians of the transformations you're going through and uh, and these Jacobians figure as you're sort of uh, propagating back down. 